السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عباده الذين اصطفى وبعد We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We begin by sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad May peace be upon him and all his family members and his entire household and all his companions and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us beloved brothers and sisters who are here it is an honor to be here at QTEL this afternoon and uh, I'd like to just share a few words with you connected to what you're doing inshallah I know it's to do with mobile phones and I have spoken in the past of the goodness of the mobile phones and I've also spoken of how when people get carried away with the mobile phone it can be a means of destruction as well but for you uh, it can only be, inshallah, means of goodness. We promote things. It's more like the apparatus or the uh, modern technology. It all depends on how you use it that actually makes it or breaks it. So if you have, for example, a knife, you can use it to cut your fruit and you can use it to do something wrong as well. So it depends. So this is why we say as Muslims we are so fortunate. We have rules governing generally every single aspect of our lives sometimes people have come to me young boys and girls especially and they say where in the Quran does it say uh, about this particular item say the internet or say a, a motor vehicle and to be honest with you there might not be a verse in the Quran that will uh, clearly state that you may or may not do a particular item but there are rules general rules governing how you should lead your life as a Muslim this afternoon, I'd like to take a moment also to acknowledge that you have taken your time from your own break and that is something that you'll be rewarded for. Uh, what I do know is that if this talk was connected to something to do with work, it would probably have been a bigger hype than it has been seeing that it's connected to something to do with religion. But believe me, religion is very, very closely connected to the work you do. The reason I say this is, who said that if you're a religious person, you need to be backward? A lot of people think that the minute you are religious, that means you're a backward character. You know, uh, you need to be sitting in the tent and you need to be enjoying a little cup of coffee and that's it. No, you can be as religious as possible and you can be the most modern character that one could have ever met. There is no contradiction between becoming modern and religion and religious. A lot of people wrongly think that, you know what, the two do not see eye to eye. Or, for example, you cannot bring the two together. If you take a look at Islam and the Muslims, from the very beginning, the best of what we were today, doctors, came from Islam. The best of mathematicians came from Islam. The best of people who studied so many different fields came from Islam they were Muslims and if you had a look at them you could see that these people are dedicated Muslims because a lot of the times outwardly you can actually tell this person's a Muslim and if you cannot tell outwardly then you ask them their name the minute you ask the name then they can't run away you know it reminds me of when I was traveling once I had I was dressed just like this and we arrived at Manchester Airport and I walked uh, in and mashallah, one, two questions and I was gone. And the brother who was behind me told me, how can you do this, man? You know, don't you, don't you want to just change your clothing? You know, these guys are going to hassle you. And I said, for what? You know, I'm, I'm not hypocritical. I've got nothing to hide. So surprisingly, he was stopped and blocked. And they kept him for a long, long time. And later on, he told me, oh, you were right. I said, you know what? Whether you like it or not, it's your name that gives you away. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala improve for us. May He use us to improve the wrong image that the world has of Islam. Today we do have a problem whereby there are people who have spoilt, sadly, the name of Islam. And they have made Islam be portrayed in the eyes of the non-Muslims, in the eyes of the globe, that it is a religion synonymous to violence, synonymous to backwardness, synonymous to disliking... Uh, what can I say, advancement in technology and advancement in uh, politics and various other fields. The truth is no. Islam is very, very broad. We are so lucky. You know, you working here at this particular company, you are so fortunate because technology is actually used, technology is actually used 
to, to make life easier for people to worship their maker. And I can tell you, I have a mobile phone. And you and I know that today you have the Quran on the mobile phone. You have at your fingertips any hadith you want to check is there. My little phone that I have, the application on it is amazing. At the time of prayer, it tells you prayer time is about to commence. That's about to commence. Then when the prayer time sets in, it tells you the prayer time or it is now time for prayer. And you set it as to how many minutes after the beginning time of the prayer will you be in the masjid and for how long. So it automatically silences the phone during your time in the masjid. It's amazing. It's my prayer. That's the app. You can actually get it on, on the, the internet. It's amazing. Now to think about it, it reminds me. We have another app that you tick off that you've read the salah. Amazing. Then it calculates after the, the month or the week how many salah you were delayed. How many salah you may have missed and so on. This is all unheard of in the past. So who says that technology will keep you further away from your Rabb, from the one who made you? It actually brings you closer. Then we have the issue of punctuality. Islam speaks about punctuality. We know from the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how a mu'min should always fulfill his word. And one of the words that we have uh, you know, agreed to when we took up the post wherever we are working right now is that we will arrive at work at a certain time and we will depart at a certain time. So if you were to arrive later for no reason, you are wrong. And religiously you are wrong. No matter how religious you may appear, there may be someone who doesn't appear as religious, but they have a quality that you don't have. And for this reason, never underestimate the 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 people around you, people sometimes look at someone and say, hey, this guy is far from religion. It has happened. Sometimes you see a person and they say, oh, this sister, you know what? She doesn't even dress properly. And yet we don't know. They may be closer to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than us. Because we might have five or six qualities that are so bad that they don't have. And they might have 10, 20 qualities that we don't have that are good. So... As we say, punctuality is a sign of your closeness to your maker. If you are punctual, you are close to your maker. And this is one of the benefits of salah. We know in the Quran, Allah says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا Allah has prescribed salah at specific times upon the believers. It is a timetable basically. One of the benefits of it is, to rotate or your entire day should rotate around your salah. You have the morning, you have the afternoon, you have early evening, you have the evening and late evening. Amazing. These are the five prayers of the day. So if we are, if we are people who are not punctual when we come to work, we will not be able to be punctual with our prayers. And if we are a people who are punctual with our prayers, it will be so easy for us to arrive at work five minutes before time. Why do I say five minutes before time? Because if you look at the five daily prayers, if Salah is commencing at 12 o'clock, for example, you will be there at 5 to 12 because you know you need to catch that first takbir, you know? You need to be there, especially when it comes to the Friday and even the other prayers. So when it comes to work, we will be there five minutes earlier. Then we learn something else as Muslims from Salah, something very important. I always like to say, you know, we, we should go deeper into some of the stuff we actually do as Muslims. People, we take it for granted. You know, when you're being led in salah what happens the imam reads when the imam reads are we allowed to say anything the answer is no you, you've got to remain silent and the the leader must speak until you when do you get your chance to speak when he says now there is a moment for you to say something so you will speak up at the time when you are meant to speak up according to what you are supposed to be saying on the topic that is supposed to be spoken about. And that is the Ameen that I say and everybody else says. And then when you go into Rukur, there is a tasbih or there is a supplication or a praising of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we engage in at that time. So what do I learn from this? I can learn a lot. One thing I do learn is Whenever we have our meetings at work, or whenever we want to talk, let one person speak at a time. The others must be silent. If one person speaks at a time, you will benefit. 
when it is your turn to speak, then you shall speak. And you will speak on the topic and you will not waste everybody's time. Because everyone is there and you know what? They want to hear something straight to the point from you. I learned this from Salah, that my maker is training me five times a day that I need to be silent when this Imam is, is reading because I need to listen to him, concentrate. I'm speaking now. Would it be okay for all of us to be speaking at the same time? Someone is busy on his phone there. It happens. I've, I've attended conferences. No, sorry, don't worry. He's not busy on his phone. But someone is busy on his phone and someone is busy chatting and the other one is at the back. Two people are speaking. If it's very important, it's another thing. But when we make it a habit to do that, it is disrespect of your colleagues. Really it is. We should not be speaking on the phone whilst I'm speaking to you. And don't just cut a big discussion to now disturb everyone by answering your phone. It's something very bad. Even if it's a QTEL line, mashallah. So we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we've got this type of training. We look into prayer. Look at what it does for us. And this is why we say a person who prays properly and understands what he's doing and looks at what he or she is meant to be benefiting from it, they will have a far greater acceptance amongst the people whom they're living with than a person who is not dedicated at all towards their own maker. If you take a look at Salah, for example, when we start our prayer, and this is another point that I've learned, are we allowed to eat in the process? No. Even if we're very hungry, you're not allowed to eat because it is something that you're not supposed to do at that time. If you do it, your prayer is nullified. Are you allowed to walk around in prayer? Do you see anyone saying Allahu Akbar and then taking a walk and you know, coming to the back and getting to the front again and nudging someone? We're not allowed. So what I learned from this is when I'm working and I've signed a contract with someone during the working time, I must not do anything that is disallowed or that will negate the fact that I am working at this place dedicatedly. So if I, for example, am working, say here at this company, between 8 and 3 or 7 o'clock and 3 o'clock, whatever your timing is there, is, there are specific times when I will sit with my tea. There are specific times when I will sit on the internet or when I will sit, for example, on the social networks. There are specific times when I may want to read the paper. But longer or, or more than what I'm allowed to do, I don't deserve the salary I'm getting. It's a fact. As a Muslim, I learned that I learned it from Salah. Because if I am supposed to be in Salah within the takbir and the taslim, within the beginning and the end of the Salah, and within, I'm not allowed to do certain things. Otherwise, I'm going to negate my prayer. If I really have to walk because there is a gap created in front of me, I'm allowed to do so within specific limits. But at the same time, I cannot just do anything and everything I want because I am basically plugged in with my maker. The same applies at our workplaces. We are plugged in. You come to work, drop out everything that is not work. Leave it. If it is very important, urgent, um, uh, emergency and so on, you can deal with it. And if your workplace allows it, you can deal with it. But if it's not allowed, let's not engage in it. Many times you have people who are Muslims who are lacking in this. And I've found some people who are not Muslims, who are very regular, and they make sure they deliver the goods. And this brings me to another issue. The issue, the issue of productivity, production. When we are working, something is expected from me. I need to take my work as so important that I want to not only produce what I am supposed to be producing, but... I want to see growth for my company. I want to see growth. How many of us would be happy if we just sat on a certain salary with no promotion for 20 years? I don't think we would be happy. After a while, we would say, you know what, I'm leaving. And the boss asks you, why are you leaving? And you, you think he should read between the lines that, you know what, I'm sitting in one place and I don't even have a promotion and my salary is still the same and years are passing and we want to leave because we know that I need a promotion. I've been working hard. But what about religiously and what about spiritually we need to think of it as well in the same way we want promotion in terms of our workplaces two things we need to know one is religiously we need to always become better the same way i've been praying five times a day now i need to make sure that i concentrate more when i'm praying i need to take my time when i'm praying i need to show an interest when i'm praying there is a difference between praying because you have to and praying because you want to. Very big difference between the two. So initially we start off by praying sometimes because we have to. If we don't, everybody's going to say, this man didn't go for Jummah. 
But there must come a time when we should pray because we want to pray. When you want to pray and you pray, you will end up spending your time and, you know, concentrating with your maker and it calms you down and cools you. The second aspect is how can we want a promotion when the work we've done does not point in the direction of the productivity that is required for us to be promoted? This is a problem. Sometimes people want promotion, but brother, you're sitting and reading the paper all day. Sometimes someone wants promotion or they, they, they want, uh, you know, everyone to acknowledge them. But sister, you are on your phone all day. What's happening? You know, every time we come and see you, you think, okay, okay, you know, and you're closing your laptop or what have you. If there are things we're not supposed to be doing whilst working, don't. Remember, cut it out for later on. And especially the issue of uh, time management, I've already touched on it, but it's very important that as Muslims we realize don't leave before you're meant to leave, unless you have to or you have the permission to do that. And consider the work your own. It's not that, oh, you know what, it's a company and let's see what happens. It's your work. Their development is your development. The production and meeting the, the uh, target and going beyond, surpassing the target is your business. You are supposed to be wanting to do that because this is what will result in the, the overall success of the entire company. Today you have on the globe certain companies that are progressing very well and others are not. And if you take a careful look, it's a lot of the time mismanagement or corruption. And a lot of the time lack of dedication that makes people fail. And there will always come a time when life will become a little bit more tough in terms of work. You know, I heard moments ago when I was entering, and I'm going to give you an example because we're sitting here at QTEL. When I was entering, I heard two brothers talking. One was saying, oh, so QTEL, uh, is that the only company here? And the other brother says, no, they now have competition. They now have Vodafone. Wow, okay. To be honest with you, that's the best thing that could have happened to QTEL, according to me. Because the only way you're going to pack up your ideas and pull up your socks is when you have competition coming in your direction. Now you, your mind needs to become innovative. You need to start thinking. You need to start producing. You need to start, you know, uh, becoming more serious. And you need the, the product that you are marketing needs to be very, very uh, attractive to the customer and the client. Why will this, or why will this be a good point for you? Because you will be f providing ease and facility to the masses. It's going to become better and better. Had you been alone, stagnant, I'm not saying you were stagnant, but I'm saying had you been alone, there was a greater chance of sitting back, relaxed, to say, as it is, they have to come, you know? And as it is, it's there anyway. They have no option but to come. Today you have, mashallah, the minds opening, thinking of different ideas. We are worried because why? Uh, not like we're losing business, but the, the, the possibility of losing anything to a counterpart, or should I say to the opposition, is something that is really mind-boggling. It should wake us up, and we need to sit and think of solutions. So it's very, very good. It's productive. It's something that really is uh, good for the mind. And for us as Muslimin, we are supposed to be progressing. So this will help us progress. And this is why I say, even when it comes to our lives, there comes a time when something happens that will make us become more serious about our maker, our maker. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the maker, the nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer, the provider, the protector, we turn to him. And every one of us, we have it in our hearts. We are all Muslimin. Even a person who might be a drunkard, Allah safeguard all of us. A person who has bad habits, Allah protect us and our offspring. There comes a time when, well, they actually know deep down, you know, I'm not supposed to be doing this. No, this is something that won't result in my goodness. But sometimes the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, creates a situation in your life where you have to turn. You have to turn because there is a negativity that has happened. I know a brother who had a very easy life. And with that easy life, he had a few bad habits, a friend of mine. And he tells me, he said, you know what? One day I had a robbery at my home. They stole absolutely everything. Now, you know, we are fortunate here in Qatar, mashallah, you, it's not as big a problem as it is back in Africa and elsewhere. So they say, he said, they stole everything. And uh, I told him, but brother, mashallah, I see you're here. You know, we were in the masjid. I said, you didn't really used to come here, did you? He says, no, now I have to. I said, why? He says, I got to pray now because I don't want this to happen again. So I told him, brother, don't you think it was 
it was quite a cheap deal in the sense that Allah let you get away with something minor to bring you to the masjid. If Allah wanted, he could have made it something so big. A health problem is worse than a robbery. Because if you have a health problem, you can't even work to get back anything. But if you had have a robbery, you might be able to work and, and get back whatever you've lost. He says, Wallahi, I did not look at it that way. But I thank Allah, whatever it is, I've realized that we need our maker in our lives. So why should we wait for something to happen in our lives before we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We'd rather turn to him whilst we're healthy, whilst we're okay. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever he's given us. Really, uh, I've touched on just a few uh, different points that I felt would be pertinent to yourselves uh, regarding work, punctuality, productivity, uh, not engaging in that which we are not supposed to be during working hours. Uh, and at the same time, uh, doing something about our spirituality. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm always very happy to meet brothers and sisters in humanity. When I say that, I mean even when we meet with non-Muslims, I've spoken at forums where they were non-Muslims. And mashallah, the, the, the amount of common space we have is amazing. We're human beings, we have blessed teachings, beautiful teachings. Islam, if you are to study the broadness of this religion, you know, people make it difficult for themselves. And people consider it, as I said, backward. But if you were to, to understand it properly, you will realize that there is nothing better than this deen that you have got, this religion that you have got. You know, the Western world is crying out for some form of guidance. And yet we are so fortunate sitting in the Muslim world. MashaAllah, let's do something about it. Let's understand that. We don't want the opposite where West is walking towards the East whilst East is walking towards the West. We don't want that to happen. Uh, we are really very fortunate. I was saying when we speak to the non-Muslims as well, we have this bond, the bond of humanity. And that bond is such that if we show the people that, look, there is this bond between us, Wallahi, it draws them closer to us. And there comes a time, I do not make it my business to convert people. You know what? I want you to come and become a Muslim. No. We explain the goodness. We share and exchange notes. And guidance comes from the maker. If it is meant to come, it will come. If it is not, it doesn't mean I hate this brother or this sister. So what? Meaning, they will come when Allah has, you know, written for them to come. We've tried. And we did not shove it down the throats of anyone. But we spoke to them. And in a lot of cases, the bare minimum is that the enmity that they have had of Islam is reduced by you speaking to them. Why do I say this? That is such a big achievement. Today, there are people who are spreading the wrong image of Islam, Muslims as well as non-Muslims. And the media is doing nobody a favor. So people really don't like us. They look at you and from a distance, they just stay far. Especially if you look a bit like me, you know. They look at you and they stay very, very far. The minute you open your mouth and you're a helpful person and you know you, you are a real Muslim and you drop the barrier of this person is Muslim, this person is non-Muslim, this person is practicing, this person is not practicing. Brother and sister, we are human beings. These people are human beings. We need to help one another. Show them the goodness of Islam. Oh, I see. This person's a Muslim, but you know what? This, their character is exemplary. Beautiful people. Wow, I'm not going to accept Islam, but I know one thing, Muslims are not as bad as we all thought they were. MashaAllah, that's a very big achievement. To me, that is a big achievement. The, the fact that the enmity someone had in their heart against Islam is reduced, is a big achievement. Now they know that we are living in harmony and peace. We are not at war with this person and that person, unlike what some people are trying to promote. No. So let us understand that we are fortunate we have interaction with people who are not Muslim as well. Use that interaction to display the goodness of Islam. Before you actually call them to Islam, let them be attracted to it. What's the point of saying, sister, you know, first day someone comes to work and she comes from perhaps, let's say, the United States and she's working. Sister, you need to be a Muslim. She say, what? <laughs> you know, first let her see the goodness of Islam. And after some time, she will come and ask you, Ay, this religion is something, man. And we have witnessed a lot of people who have actually come into the fold of Islam in that particular way. I've said quite a bit, and really I don't wish to take up too much of your time. If anyone would like to ask me a question or two, please feel free to do that. And if not, then inshallah we can close.